From the 17th century, population growth in England and other parts of Europe accelerated due to increases in agricultural production as well as increasing medical knowledge and technological innovation linked to the Industrial Revolution, but more important, European expansion overseas. European powers were importing food and resources from other parts of the world that were in short supply at home and exported part of the excess population to the colonies. However, threat of food shortages, even famine, was still a fact of life for most Europeans. In fact, population growth drove people to the margins of subsistence, leading to intolerable social conditions, in particular in the growing industrial cities of Britain. A lack of knowledge about hygiene led to epidemic disease and high mortality. However, birth rates still outstripped death rates despite these problems. But there was another development, the Age of Reason, often called the Enlightenment. Thinkers and scientists across Europe developed ideas about social justice, poverty relief and sanitation. In short, these people believed in progress or the improvement of the living conditions for all. Thomas Malthus was a political economist and Enlightenment thinker who observed a growing population with increasing concern. To explain poverty and famine, he wrote a famous essay at the end of the 18th century entitled An Essay on the Principle of Population. In good Enlightenment fashion, he was trying to find natural laws similar to Newton's law of gravity that could explain the continuing existence of poverty in the world. According to Malthus, population tends to increase faster than the supply of food available for its needs. Whenever a gain occurs in food production, it results in higher population growth. Over time, population growth will exceed the increase in agricultural production and population will crash due to food shortages. The mathematical basis of this idea is the principle that the population is growing in a geometrical rate 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. The food supply, on the other hand, increases only in an arithmetical fashion. 2, 4, 6, 8, etc., leaving an increasing deficit in food produced and mouth to be fed. Maltus concluded that the power of population is indefinitely greater than the power in the earth to produce subsistence for man. In short, Maltus' theory predicts that when food production increases over time to meet demand, the population will grow faster and exceed the food or resource producing capacity and the growth is checked in the end by famine, disease and war, something that is called a Malthusian crisis. However, Malthus recognized that technological development and better agricultural techniques could push up the ceiling of population and delay the point of crisis. But what goes up must come down, and inevitably population growth will outstrip technological driven food production and crash. Malthus' theory contradicted the optimistic belief prevailing in the early 19th century that a society's fertility would lead to economic progress. Malthus' theory won supporters and has been used as an argument against efforts to better the condition of the poor. During the 20th century, environmentalists used Malthus' argument to stress that the earth cannot sustain too many people and that resources will run out unless population growth is brought under control. Famous examples are the population bomb written by Paul Ehrlich and the report for the Club of Rome limits to growth. The latter was written by a team of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Both works predicted disaster for humanity due to rapid population growth outstripping resource supply. Ehrlich made a grim prediction that in the 1970s and 80s hundreds of millions of people were starved to death in spite of any crash program embarked upon now. Both books urged that radical action was needed to limit overpopulation. Limits to growth and the population bomb rekindled Malthus' theory in the 20th century and a debate whether Malthus was right or wrong. Up till the present day it seems that history proved Ehrlich and other doomsayers wrong since the mass starvations predicted for the latter quarter of the 20th century never occurred. The reasons for this are multiple, but one of the important factors that Malthus could not have foreseen was the demographic transition. 
The demographic transition is a shift in population development from a situation of high birth rates and high mortality during the pre-industrial age to a new situation with low birth rates and low mortality during the post-industrial age. The demographic transition is attributed to a more affluent and better educated population that has access to contraceptives. More importantly, Maltus and the 20th century authors mentioned before failed to account for improvements in technology such as the use of fertilizers, pesticides and mechanization. These were made possible with cheap, readily available energy contained in fossil fuels, which unleashed the greatest increase in food production the world has ever seen, enabling Earth population to increase sevenfold since Maltus' day. The growth of food production outstripped the rates of population growth. However, there are signs that Maltus' conclusions were not entirely wrong and that the increase in food production is slowing. In the first decade of the 21st century, food prices increased quite rapidly. Between 2005 and the summer of 2008, the prices of wheat and corn tripled, and the price of rice increased fivefold. This led to food riots in nearly two dozen countries, mainly in the developing world. But unlike previous shocks driven by short-term local or regional food shortages, this price spike came in a year when the world's farmers reaped a record grain crop. Why then high food prices? This time, the high prices were a symptom of a larger problem within the worldwide food web, one that's not going away anytime soon. For most of the first decade of the 21st century, the world has been consuming more food than has been produced. After years of drawing down stockpiles, in 2007 the world saw global grain reserves fall to 60 days of global consumption, the second lowest on record at that time. Agricultural productivity growth has fallen over the past few decades and it is at present only 1-2% a year and is expected to decline further in coming decades. This means that it could become too low to meet population growth and increasing demand. This leads us inevitably back to Maltus. His idea that populations have to live within their resource base and that the capacity of society to increase resources from that base is ultimately limited. And this is not far-fetched, as recent developments have suggested. In the end, it seems there has to be a balance between population and resources. Perhaps somewhere deep in his crypt in Bath Abbey, Maltus is quietly wagging his bony finger and mumbling, I told you so. Thank you.